Lake Okeechobee is the beating heart of South Florida. Every drop of water from Orlando International Airport down flows into the lake, continuing to the marshlands to the south. Without it, the Everglades would die. And we're in an area that um, normally has submerged plants growing, like seagrasses. Dr. Paul Gray is the science coordinator for the Audubon Everglades Restoration Program. Gray says for people to understand the present toxic situation of the lake, you have to look to the past. And here is what is happening. For more than 50 years, chemicals found in fertilizer has been flowing into Lake Okeechobee through runoff from cattle ranches, orange groves, and septic tanks, just to name a few. Those chemicals mostly stay trapped in the lake, but several times a year, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers releases water from that lake into local rivers that lead to the Gulf and the Atlantic. It's not a sewer, um, but it's, it's, you know, it's going that direction. So why is it a sewer? It all began in 1928 and a hurricane is to blame. The storm surge from a category four hurricane killed thousands and in response, the feds built a dike around the entire lake to protect residents from future floods. Toxic waste has been building up in the lake ever since. And it's, it's gonna take billions of dollars and it's gonna take decades. But unless we do it, this is gonna be our life. And no, you know, no one wants to have toxic algae blooms. We're Florida, this is where you come to fish and where you come to swim and kayak and enjoy the water sports and go to the beach. In fact, it is so bad that in the summer of 2018, 90% of Lake Okeechobee was covered in a toxic blue-green algae. Gray blames millions of pounds of phosphorus, a compound found in fertilizer, which continues to freely flow into the lake, trapped inside by the dike. In 1983, scientists recorded more than two and a half million pounds of phosphorus flowing into the lake annually. Today, it isn't much better. Records show more than two million pounds of phosphorus pouring in in 2018. Those amounts are more than 10 times the recommended limit. Yeah, the goal is 105. <laughs> so if we only had 105 tons flowing in, the lake would clear up, it would be clean, it wouldn't have the toxic algae blooms, it would have good algae blooms, and we'd be in way better shape. A lot of our rivers are so polluted now that even if everybody was doing their best behavior, we're still gonna have just residual loads, we call it the legacy phosphorus. And we think we have enough phosphorus up there now to continue these high lows for 20 to 50 more years. What does that mean for the future of Florida's waterways? So it's, it's a perfect storm of a, a nightmare that just won't seem to go away. Boat captain Chris Whitman, born and raised on the San Carlos Bay near Fort Myers, is now on a mission to save his local waterways. You can see some particulate of that blue-green algae. Ferrying scientists searching for the source of pollution, killing marine life. Why is it more intense? Why is it more virulent? Why is it lasting longer? One of those scientists, John Cassani from the nonprofit Calusa Waterkeeper, is teaming up with Florida Gulf Coast University to search for answers as things get even worse. I want to believe that we can turn this around. Cassani says he's never seen cyanobacteria, that toxic algae from the lake, making it past barrier islands like Sanibel and into the Gulf of Mexico's red tide zone. The degree and intensity of these algal blooms is not normal in any respect of the word. Add a little bit in there. Scientists already have ample proof that red tide, which began last October, continues to grow, feasting on fertilizer, contaminating the water, but they hope to learn more. The samples that these scientists took will be ready in a couple of months, but they want to know definitively that the water they sampled coming out of Lake Okeechobee compared to what's coming in from the red tide in the Gulf is causing this massive bloom. They want to know where the majority of the pollution is coming from. Is it from the atmosphere, runoff from farms, contaminated water from Lake Okeechobee? Some studies have suggested dust from the Sahara Desert is feeding the red tide. Well, if you find out, then you can change policy exactly. to address exactly. the problem. Back on Lake Okeechobee, Gray points out dead zones and areas still thriving. We're in the middle of Indian Prairie on Lake Okeechobee. Absolutely beautiful out here. We're two miles from open water. Back over there is where that blue-green algae is, that toxic bacteria. But amazingly, right here, the water is filtered. It's so pure you can drink it. And this is what scientists, all of this, are trying to protect. Plans are in the works to fix the dike system around the lake and build reservoirs that would clean the water before it moves south to the Everglades. But there is nothing to prevent polluted fertilizer rich water from seeping into Lake Okeechobee in the future. We know how to do this, but it's very expensive and it requires going to all the landowners, whether you're a farmer or whether you're a city, 
or a homeowner and saying you've got to control your nutrients and you've got to fertilize as little as possible. If you do a lot of fertilizing, you've got to recycle your water in your property, don't let it get off, try to clean it. And then we have to do other projects. As algae blooms stain our lakes and rivers green and a different toxin turns more than 100 miles of our coasts a murky rust red, it's killing wildlife, sickening residents, and driving away tourists. Red tide isn't new to Florida's coastline. The phenomenon occurs naturally and is documented as far back as the 1850s. But scientists say there's nothing natural about what is happening today. But the rate of change that's occurring now is not normal in any sense. What really concerns me too is not just that we have a thousand more people moving to Florida every day driving a lot of this nutrient problem, but we got a climate change thing. We got a global warming thing that's creating more intense storm events more often. And that's driving a lot of the uncertainty that we're seeing with trying to predict how to re remediate these problems. In South Florida, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.